you're listening to the Texas Tidmasters Podcast. What up, everybody? This is Carlos, the Texas Squeegee, and welcome to the official Texas Tint Masters Window Tint Podcast, where I meet with everyday installers to get insights and perspectives on window films, products, tools, methods, strategies, everything. My first guest today is Jason Amaletsky from Colorado Springs. Now, Jason is a grade A badass installer that does window tint for cars, commercial, residential. He does paint protection and he does vinyl wrap. So with all that experience, what are some of the methods, strategies, tools, and films that have stuck with him for that long? You're about to find out. So swig of water for all the installers out there And enjoy the show. Oh, this is like my thing. Oh. I, I carry I carry okay. these and I do uh, until I'm off work and I'm done. <laughs> dude, they come in they come in so handy. Like, oh, I know. Uh, I, I even when I work, I don't put them in my tool bag. If for some reason, I just I, it's a habit. Just coming in here and just boom. Yeah. Oh yeah. Got so many of those things. <laughs> I would like to let go of them, but Dude, what do you what do you have on your windshield, man? When I saw you pulling up, like seventy uh, percent chameleon. Chameleon, that's what it was, because it had an interesting look, and I'm like, yeah, it's just like blue and green, and yeah. dude, I'm always interested in like what all other tenors have on their vehicles, because oh, like I mean, it's kind of like scientists and madman. It's like you can do whatever you want to it. You so. can. Can. Like uh, back back home, my brother's car, he, we did a it was, we put it up on our story the other day, but uh, we did a, a carbon thirty five, okay. and then we did a silver twenty behind it. Oh yeah. So it's, yeah. it's got kind of like a greenish reflective look. Mm-hmm. Um, man, it blocks heat like you wouldn't believe, but it's a it's a different look rather than just traditional black. Right. Yeah. So that was pretty interesting mix of like that I'd done a long time ago, and then my brother would say, "Hey, can you do it on my car?" Like, yeah, this. Just give it a shot. Yeah, so. I, I did. I got uh, Lumar CTX. Uh, CTX? Yeah. That's their carbon? That's their nano ceramic. Their nano ceramic. Yeah. Cool. Um, back then, it was, that was it, you know? Yeah. They didn't have the, the full ceramic or the stratus that's out So, now. man, and this is like, probably, this is before I even started really getting into the game, so. Five years ago? Really? Yeah. I've been doing it for a while, but it wasn't full time. And until like about a year and a half ago, that's when I, st- I was like, okay, taking it for now. But 20 years past. <laughs> Dude, how has the game changed over time? Because like most of the people I talk about in the, in the industry, they're all older than me. And uh, I was very curious, like the perspectives, because I mean, you're very heavy on Instagram at Tint Dude 03, right? Tint Dude 03, yeah. Tint Dude 03. Tint Dude 03. Because I know so many times when I'm looking through pages, you know, it shows you who's liked them. And sure enough, Tint Dude 3 liked this post, yeah. Tint Dude 3. So. I, I, I try to do about two hours a, a night Not to really. stay up with everybody and, and stuff like that. I just kind of support, you know, that's yeah. what we're all out to do is just kind of support. That's what actually stood out to me about you is the fact that you're just so, like, I can call you up. Oh, yeah. And like you, you gave me one of the best pieces of advice. At one time, I was doing this commercial job, and take you said you could out. take the seal out. And uh, I was like, oh, really? Yeah. It's just one of those things where like just you know stuck. I just happened to have a hook. I stuck the hook in there and pulled it out. And I was like, wow, that makes a, day difference. Yeah, day difference. big big difference. And there's no light slivers or anything like that on the no. side. It it all up, and no. it's like that made a big Clean big difference. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you guys do a lot of commercial and residential over here. That's that's all. That's really? all I was actually hired on to do here is their flat class. Dang. Um, after he saw me tend a car, after the fourth day I was here, yeah. he's like, "Yeah, you're not going anywhere." <laughs> so they got you doing uh, so cars now. I do. Oh my gosh, dude! I do everything. Uh, PPF. Um, you're like a jack of all geez, trades. Yeah, tail lights, um, that's... Glass, uh safety security. Um, What's the so, thing? Is you worked on a safety and security? I've done fifteen. Damn. 15 mil. I Dude, that's like, it's like cutting a plastic uh, <laughs> cup. <laughs> Do you use regular blades to cut that no, stuff? No, I use the black carbon blades. Okay. Yeah. Um, most of the time on that, though, when you're doing that kind of thick of film, uh, you use a ceramic cutter. Yeah. And you actually pre cut before you put it up on the glass. A ceramic cutter? Mm-hmm. I've never yeah. heard of that. Yeah. I should have brought it. <laughs> <laughs> I could have brought it. I've, I've I only seen that. Yeah, stuff. I've only seen the 15 mil on the uh, sample on the booklets. Sample? Yeah, yeah, but I, I've heard. I've never worked with it, but I've heard that you you've got a 
just be real, lay in on yeah. that squeegee a yeah, lot, right? Absolutely. Yeah, two stage it is the best thing to do. You What's can work, you can work with the squeegee? Yeah. Not like it's just a like a four or five inch like table squeegee. Yeah. Nothing fancy. And all you're doing is just pushing all the air out, and then you go back over it with the um, what's it called the the Thor's hammer. Oh whatever. man. I've, yeah. I think I've heard of it, but I haven't bought um, it. I think that's I think that's what they call it. Um, Thor hammer. Yeah, it's it's a massive blue mags but yeah it's so it's not like the regular oh no man it looks like a shovel <laughs> it's got like a shovel handle yeah on it. yeah so you guys so, like because the temperature over here doesn't get as hot as i think it would down in, in so Houston. we don't have the humidity yeah um so when i moved here from oklahoma yeah it's a huge difference in humidity so you, were you a tenor back in oklahoma oh yeah that's where you learned over there that's where i learned so i assume yeah. it's hotter over there isn't it what's that is it hotter Temperature wise, yeah, way way hotter and hundred percent humidity. So Damn. it's a lot different. So when I came here, I had to change things up. Why? Why is that? Just the the difference in your soap and water mixture. Yeah. Um, the way you shrink things. Uh, you know. Oh really? I know trying that to difference. dry shrink uh, in Oklahoma is it's it's, it's hard. Oh, because of the humidity, the film sticks to the glass. Absolutely. Ah, yeah. see, I didn't know so that. So I was a I was a wet shrinker for like the longest time, and then yeah. I come here, and the guys were like wet shrink you know and they're like you got dry shrink and i'm like i don't think i've ever dry shrunk before you know and so they were showing me some stuff and then and then you know i changed up a couple of different things but now uh i pocket shrink everything with with wet and i love it and i have so no the, issues the pocket shrink method is when you have that a bubble and you pump air from the bottom and then just yeah so at your uh, the the bottom of the finger you, you force that heat up inside yeah uh and you create that pocket and then once you start to see it kind of flex out if you move the heat gun up the finger yeah it literally just kind of lays down and you can take your hand or hard card or whatever and yeah. it just smooths out um especially with a lot of films um you don't get the ghosting in it um uh, keeps you from doing that so what's the ghosting uh, um oh, man what film is it that that uh Lumar had out it was the real reflective um, gosh, I can't remember what it was called. I think they stopped making it. Um, if you shrink it and you put it, uh, you install it. Yeah. You can see the shrink mark, and you can kind of see where the oh okay. the finger was. Yeah, like yeah, the yeah. Ghost in the film. Yeah. Uh, so whenever I pocket shrink wet, I have no chances. Of, and I do that with Stratus, which is their their thickest film that's out. And they're, Lumar. Was, yeah, they're ceramic. Is uh, what mill is it? You know, one point five or two. No, I think it's it's either two or two point five. Two point five. I can't. I can't wow. remember. I it's it's, it's a it's a thick I film either way. I just, yeah, I just like film. That's all. Yeah, I, I mean at that it's I mean two or two point five. It's it's still a thick it's film. Thick. It's a thick yeah. film to work with. It's not fifteen mil security film, but it's still have thick. you just out of curiosity, <laughs> have you ever tried shrinking security 15? film? Uh, I've actually installed um, what was it uh, eight mil. Eight mil on a Scion XB, the little X, the little box yeah. style. Eight I, mil film. Eight, eight mil on on the whole thing. That hmm. was interesting. Why did they get go with eight mil just for the? She got tired of being broken into. Oh dang! Yeah. Really? Yeah. Did did it help or do you know if she ever had to come I back? Honestly, never heard back from her. So <laughs> I guess that's a good I thing. I think it's doing its thing. But yeah. Yeah. It was kind of crazy when she asked for it, and I'm like, really? And she's like, yeah. So I did it. Yeah. Yeah, so I I didn't know that there was a difference in changing uh, I guess altitudes right altitudes altitude, and climate altitude was a little bit uh, not much but um, I think uh, because Colorado has literally ninety eight percent sunlight all year round really yeah okay. um, I think uh, if I'm if I'm correct and don't quote me on this uh, Colorado has the highest uh, glass breakage per capita. I remember you telling me that so before. So I, I, that's just what I've heard. I'm not 100% sure because I had never really researched it. Yeah. Um, but it, it makes a, a little bit of difference when you're doing uh, certain windows. That's where like double pane glass and, and, and whatnot. Yeah. So why why is that, that the glass breaks a little? Because breaks it, easier. it's uh, depending upon the film, it has a very high absorption rate. Uh, the heat's got to go somewhere. Yeah. So when it comes in that first pane, you know that little gas pocket that's between the yeah. two panes is supposed to kind of dis dissipate the the heat and then go back out. But you got something with the high absorption on there. It's just, it's just building it up. Yeah, yeah. So yeah you I, failure, 
glass breakage, it happens. Yeah, so far, I, back in Houston, you know, we haven't had that issue yet. I don't know if altitudes would make a difference. or I don't think altitude really does a difference, um, but I could be wrong. I could just, I, maybe I could have just been lucky so far. Um, uh, I mean, I usually think the biggest thing, like when I was in Oklahoma doing fly glass, the, the biggest thing that we had to worry about was partial shading. That was the biggest thing, was partial shading. Um, because the sun was, was really intense. Yeah. Um, so whenever, it, you know, the, the sun moved over the glass and yeah. there was a tree or something that always hit at the same time, uh, and you put something on it with the high absorption, that's yeah. where you got it. Because one side of the window was real hot, the other was cold, you know. So as the sun moved over, it put that stress on it. Uh, I so see. I ran into that a lot when I was in Oklahoma. Yeah. Not so, so much up here. No, I've never had any issues here. Man, you ever you ever get <laughs> you ever get tired of drives? Cause like just driving up and down this road, it's like I mean up and down the well this this part of town. I mean this this side of the state. It's Colorado uh, Springs is huge, and a lot of people don't you know they think it's just Colorado Springs, but with all that's the, what the I thought sub, at first. You know yeah. the little sub towns that are around. It's it's huge. So it's the market's huge. pretty good up here for the market's great. That's awesome. Man. I see a lot of dealerships, and that's when to me that was kind of the telltale sign. I was like. Looks like it's booming over here. It is. Uh, so the the company that I'm contracted with, uh, we do 25, 30 cars a day. Wow. So it's it's constant. Yeah. Um, I'm doing average flight class jobs, uh, two to three a week. Yeah. On an average, just kind of depends. So like, what drew you here, Colorado Springs from Oklahoma? I wanted, I wanted out of the heat. I, really? I just yeah, I got tired of the heat. I've got a I've got a child and. Yeah. Um, I took it was funny. He, he's a he was a year old, and I took him to the park, and all the playground stuff was like you know scorching hot. Yeah, oh, dude. enjoy it. Yeah. How can you take your son to the park and not enjoy it? So I was like, I'm I'm done. I'm done. So I just started looking around, and, and uh, Colorado Springs seemed kind of nice, and I was out. You just came here and just started tending. That's it. Cool. So I was how, actually tending here before I actually moved here. <laughs> really? Yeah. How did that happen? Um, so before I moved, because um, I'm an independent contractor, so I actually own my own company, but I just contract out to right. them, whoever needs something. Right. Um, so funny story is, is I was looking for something, and there was three three tent shops that I got a hold of, and uh, the third one I contacted, the uh, the top manager answered the phone and I said, yeah, I was wondering if you guys were hiring. He's like, oh, you just have to come in and fill out an application. I said, well, I'm in Oklahoma. He goes, well, do you have a resume? I said, yeah. So I faxed over the resume and literally within two minutes of me hitting send, the owner calls me. No. And he's like, I just looked at your resume and uh, I got a job. Up. You want to come check it out? I said, sure. Did the Air Force Academy. Three wow. uh, dorm buildings. It was every window. In all three buildings. Wow. How long did it take? It took us uh, six and a half weeks to do, I think, is what it was. So I came up, uh, stayed at a uh, family uh, friend, uh, husband and wife, and uh, stayed with them. Yeah. And I just started sleeping at home, and that's, that's what brought me here. Nice. Yeah. Right off the bat, starting right off, off with a bat. big project. Right but they kept you around, so you must yeah. have knocked it out of the park. Well, I've been here seven years now. Yeah, so it's been great. He treats me right, and I don't have any issues. That's good. That's so. good because it's 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 tough finding. Oh yeah. Good techs. I, absolutely. It, Especially in this industry. Yeah. A lot. Because there's some things you can't. Like there's some things I feel like you have to have with you to be in order to be good at it. You have to be able to. Care about your work. Take pride in what what you do, because otherwise, there's like there are people that I've I've worked with, where they've got the potential, but for whatever reason, they don't look after the work. And it's not it's not such a big fix, but um, it's tough finding people that that. It's uh, very tough. It and, was uh, tough for me to find people to, to work with me in Oklahoma. It yeah, was, it was it was hard. It was real hard. Yeah, and uh, I mean, there's a, there's a few a few places now that that are, have like online courses and stuff. Uh, my younger brother signed up for one of them because he's a, he's an interesting character because me, I learned from somebody else. I think most people learn from, you know, someone else who's a pro. Yeah. Uh, with him, he, he learned a little bit from me, but he goes online and does a lot of research. He does like Ralph from Flex Films. 
Yes. He yeah. goes on his channel. He watches all of his stuff. Um, Austin Cook from the Tint Institute. Oh, Austin Cook. He's he's a character. I I, I love him. He's. <laughs> You've met him before? I've never met him. Yeah. I would love to go and, and hang out with him yeah. one day. Just because he's got that big old beard, and he just seems like just a laid-back guy. Yeah. Um, but I, I watch some of his, his little tutorials on Instagram and stuff like that. And, yeah. And stuff. And we've chit-chatted back and forth a couple of times through uh, direct messages and yeah. stuff like that. He just seems like a great character. I yeah. would love to go. I, there's What's funny is so many guys, um, and even some of the girls that I follow on Instagram, that are tenors. I, I would love to be able to just take time off. Yeah. Kind of like what you're doing. Yeah. But in, instead of um, just hanging out with them, I want to go work with them. Yeah. I yeah. do. I do. Because I, I see stuff they do and I'm like, okay, I want to learn more. Yeah. I, I've been doing this for 20 years and I'm still learning because it yeah. changes all the time. Yeah. So I, I see where you're going with that. So, yeah, yeah. And, and there's a... Uh, Every time when I meet other tenors, every time when I'm sitting, we start talking about tinning. It's just one of those things where there's something to learn from everybody. Oh, absolutely. And uh, that's absolutely. that's one of the reasons why I kind of wanted to do this. Like, well, you know, we can all learn from each other. And uh, so, why not? yeah. In in uh, but like you know, going back to the, to him, I guess being taught certain things. Right. I, I remember like one of the things that the guy that was uh, training me, I, I I picked this up when I was 12 years old, but he drilled in my head: the job has to come out right. It's whether it's they whether the customer will accept it or the managers are going to be okay with it. Like for you, you have to be take that pride in yourself to do the job right. Okay. And so, um, I don't. He was a big, big influence because he that's that was his thing is do the job right. If it takes a little bit longer, do it over anyways. You know the film Absolutely. is there. So, right. but uh, I mean, what's some of the things that work for you whenever you first started learning? Well, how did you how did you get into the business? Oh, geez. Well, you just opened up a can right there. <laughs> um, honestly. Uh, uh, I was in, I was in college at the time, and uh, I was just looking for a part time job. Yeah. And uh, um, I went to I, I grew up in a small town, and uh, I went into this tent shop, and there was only two in the town, and one just wasn't great, and but the other one was very well known, been around for years. So I went in, so he was he was hiring, and he said, "Do you know how to do anything?" I said, "Absolutely not." And he kind of laughed. He went out and actually looked at my car. <laughs> and I'm I'm very OCD, and I love to have things detailed. Yeah. And my car was always spotless. My cars are always spotless. And he hired me because my car was clean. Really? I said, okay. Was it so, tinted? Yeah, it was tinted. Did you do it? Company. Oh. <laughs> I never tinted it, no. But did he, did he know that it was done by... No. He just no. assumed... He, he, was just, just assumed. he didn't ask any questions. It's kind of funny, though. Yeah. But, um, so he hired me on just to be his gopher. Yeah. Uh, I did all of his deliveries. I did his inventory, and I helped out the guys. Like, he did uh, car audio, accessories, window yeah, tent, okay. yeah. just a, a roundabout, everything. Yeah. And um, so after about two weeks, he came up to me, and he said, you want to learn how to tint windows? I was like, yeah, why not? I'm always down to learn something new. So he actually sent me to Euless, Texas, to the Lumar Tent School for a week. Really? Yeah. Sent me out there, flew me out there, everything, and wow. uh, paid for it all. So I came back, and I'm sorry, but I love Lumar. I love their films. I'm not trying to market Lumar, but hey, that, it's class, cool, that class, yeah. uh, in my opinion, back then, I mean, this was 20 years ago, Yeah. Um, didn't really do a thing for me. Really? Uh, no. Uh, I mean, I basically had to waste a bunch of film, yeah. um, but did it, I, to me... Knowing everything I know now and looking back, I, I don't think they train, um, I wouldn't say correctly, but I don't think they train uh, everything that you should know before they send you out on your own. Oh, okay. I think they should go a little bit more in depth. Yeah. Uh, it's just basic stuff. I mean, and I mean bare basic. Yeah. So I get back um, and I started working with his Henry, who's been doing it for years. Uh, actually was a good friend of mine. So he kind of helped out this and that. And then, see, that was six months later. Uh, my buddy actually was taking on a totally different job and out of the window tending business. Yeah. And the owner said, I need you full time. I'm in college at the time. And I'm like, I can't do that. My college is important. Yeah. This was supposed to be part time. And he basically said, one of the two. And I, all right, so I left. I was finishing my degree. 
So did, did you know how to tint at that time? Did you were you already mm, well rounded? Pretty much rounded. Okay. Uh, I mean, I know there's certain cars now that people look at. I'm not touching that car. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so back then, I mean, I was able to do basic stuff. I could I could do it. It may yeah. take me a little long, but I could do it. So with him saying that, uh, pushed me even harder to get it down and and, oh, okay. and get me through college. Yeah. So I made my own business cards. I started buying film from Johnson Window Films. Nice. Uh, bought all my own tools, everything, and I started posting stuff all over college. And I started doing stuff after hours. I was attending cars in between classes and Man. I paid for my college. And I was actually stealing business from him and he got mad at me. <laughs> so that's how I got started. And Dude, I've been that's doing awesome. ever since. So and I still got my college degree. So, nice. That's yeah. that's awesome. Crazy. That's pretty cool. It's funny. Yeah. Yeah. So it, I guess whenever you started doing it on your own, what did you learn from from there forward? As far as the actual skills and work that goes into it, because you were doing it outdoors, any pretty much anywhere. No, I, was, you... I actually had a. Uh, I, I I've never done a car outdoors. Well, I have, um, but not on a constant basis. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, a buddy of mine had a garage and. I just used his garage. He gave me the key and the code and everything. He said, whenever you want. I said, all right. Um, I just, I do the basics. And then I started just kind of learning from my mistakes. Yeah. And I think that's what every tenor does. Is you learn from your mistakes. Exactly. Because it's so hard for a tenor to train someone without actually putting their hands on that person's hands and going, this is the way you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you got to move it like this, or this is how you got to touch it. Yeah. Because it's all word of mouth, and you got to kind of watch. Yeah. Um, so I just learned from my mistakes and figured out different ways. I, yeah. You know, back then, we didn't have, uh, you know, YouTube and stuff <laughs> yeah. like that. Yeah, you laugh, but it's No, and it's true. actually, when I first started picking this up, it was back in 2006. And, uh, I mean, we still had flip phones at that time. Yeah. Internet on the phone was, Absolutely. I don't know if it was like a new thing at that time or yeah. still wasn't a thing. Yeah, but it was, it was coming around, yeah. yeah and uh, but So I, I had no way to reference, like some of these new guys jumping into the deal or, um, yeah. you know, or they're curious, like, you know, the new cars are coming out, you know, yeah. giving tips on what to do. And you, you, you weren't able to do that back then. You yeah. just had to do it. And, and that's what I was And then, yeah, about. learn from the... The mistakes. That's the, that's the one thing. I've, I've taught a few people, but that's the one thing that I've come to realize is that sometimes it's, it's, it's very important to learn what not to do and why not to do it. Absolutely. Because that's happened to me so many times where, I mean, I always try to change things up just to keep it interesting, trying new solutions and this, that, or the and other. And you need to do that. Uh, and I think any tenor out there yeah. uh, can agree to that because you get burned out. Yeah. And... I've been doing it years. I am not saying I'm burned out, but I'm already hitting that that downfall of, of staying with it. Yeah. Um, it's not that uh, I physically can't do it, but I'm getting bored. Yeah. I mean, I really am. I'm yeah, because it seems like you like challenges. I mean, just I do. And tending a car is just not a challenge for me anymore. Yeah. I mean, I've done just about ever out there from mini keepers to uh, you know I eights. You know, yeah. I mean, those those are no fun. Have you have you messed with the around with the Tesla yet? Which one? There's the, a the Tesla three. I think is it three where everybody's talking about that windshield. I have not. We have not had one come in yet. Yeah, so, we haven't had that one either. But but I, I want one too. I'm like, I wish someone would. Cause <laughs> I need that challenge because yeah. I, I I can literally take a car and I, I don't even think about it. Like yeah. my mindset is totally somewhere else. I know that's kind of sad to say, but. It is, but you're you've gotten so good at it. Yeah. I'm just sitting there, just doing it and 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 walking away, and that's where yeah. I'm getting bored. Yeah. Um, that's why I actually started moving into doing vinyl. Uh, there's a little yeah, bit of a challenge that. with it, and and I love doing it. And yeah. when you can uh, take a car and make it look totally different for a customer, and they just are wild about it. Yeah, you know, I love that. You know, just like ten in the car. You know, people are like, "Oh, it's a car," but you know, yeah. when they pick it up, they're like, "Oh, it looks like a new car," and they're yeah. all excited. Well, that's how I get with the vinyl now, and that's why I'm kind of moving moving into that, that. direction. Yeah, that'd be pretty because I've seen some of your posts on yeah, uh, Instagram. I've done it quite a bit, yeah. So, it's I see a lot of 
a lot of tenors dabbling into vinyl and a lot of vinyl dabbling. It's kind of a thing where you Everybody's can... Everybody's kind of doing... Yeah, it's make, coming across the aisles yeah. to the other side. Well, what's uh, nice is, that, I mean, you can you can run all that out of, out of one shot. I mean, it's a, yeah. a one-stop deal. So yeah. that's why everybody's starting to, to venture in. And vinyl, man, that that is soared over the years. And it's going it's, to... I mean, it's keep going it's, up. I don't it's think gonna, it's ever going to die. Because I think that you've got more variety or you can do more... Art- Artistic things oh, with vinyl that you could with endless possibilities. Yeah, endless to to cars, uh, homes. I mean, you know, people are homes. wrapping countertops. You know, I mean, people are wrapping refrigerators. I mean, I it's, think it's, it. it's it's crazy. What Have you gotten that those those kinds of jobs? I wrap, I wrap my own fridge in my house. <laughs> What'd you put on there? Carbon fiber. <laughs> I was bored. I, I was I get bored and I had some carbon fiber laying around and I. I I got a fridge in my garage, and yeah. I just looked at it, and it was like a blank canvas. Did, did you did you do a, a countertop on the a restroom sink? It was actually my bathroom sink in my I house. I remember it. I now when you said that, I'm like, I remember that. That's, that's what I'm saying. Is like I I I like to be able to transform things and make it totally different than what people actually see it. Yeah. You know, and that's why I'm kind of starting to get away from the window tint. I, I'd rather. Do that. You see more of a reaction out of people with oh, vinyl then. Because the tint does make a big difference. You can have a, a car, and as soon as you slap bubbly purple tint, it just looks so much worse. And then you clean up the tint, and it makes it look so much better. Absolutely. But So there, there is a transformation that goes there that people really dig when they see their car change. But the vinyl Every stuff, time. it's... Yeah, that's that's it's a whole new yeah. it's a whole new world out there with, with vinyl. Yeah, so how long have you been messing around with vinyl? I've been doing vinyl for... Going on five years. Now. Five years. Yeah. And did you start picking that up yourself, or did you? I picked take... it up here. Yeah. Like you, you were training, just messing trial and error. Just um, <laughs> a couple of people would come in and ask if if we were doing vinyl, and yeah, uh, the guy that I work for um, started buying some vinyl rolls, and uh, he basically just said, "Here you go." <laughs> and same thing, you know, yeah. trial and error uh, happened quite a bit, but yeah, you know, I learned more. Um, as I go, yeah. But uh, I, I love it. I love it. This I always like, try to talk about my friends and they're rapping something. They're like, "Would you stop?" <laughs> I'm like, oh, "Come on, it's fun." Yeah, sometimes I get the bug that bits me too. But like, where I just want to start rapping it. Like, if you go to the to our shop, uh, we have a little mailbox outside, and uh, I got the black chrome. I did the bottom in black chrome, and the flip the uh, the, the flap. Flip? I did a gold. Oh. So it's it's gold chrome at the top and black chrome at the bottom and uh, <laughs> me and me and uh, me and him like whenever me and my brother when we first did it we watched the mailman just come up because like you know where the where the office is at our windows are tinted so you can't see inside right. but from inside you could stand right up there and see outside and they won't even know so he came up there one time he was just like <laughs> looking at this like golden That's mailbox right. I, I I wrapped my mailbox at my house too so, really yeah so trust me I um it, it's it's fun I, and it's um, I get more of a kick out of out of doing those kind of things than than anything. Um, you know, I've got friends that are just like, you know, they do their job and they're so on. Yeah. You know, they're they're so big into playing online video games and this and that, and I just I can't do it. I can't. Oh, the video. So my yeah. mind and and uh, my imagination just start to run. It it runs constantly, and yeah. I'm looking around the house trying to find something. I, it's it's sad, but it's true. It's true. It's actually, but I love it. I, yeah, what's yeah. Funny that's is I look at my car and I'm like, hmm, what can I do next? Man, I do this. It's sad. <laughs> He's like, yeah, because it's you He's just want to try stuff, man. Absolutely. You just want to be able to mess around, and because sometimes you look back and like, man, that actually looks pretty cool. Oh yeah. Oh, and yeah. and a lot of the learning is you know kind of what's accidental learning is when you're doing something and you learn something that you didn't expect that. Right, learn a lesson out of it. Yeah. You know, that's that's a pretty cool part. Uh, yeah, even the guys I work with, they're like, "What'd you do different to your car this week?" You know, it's, it's <laughs> so like yeah, it's like, always something different. Yeah, always, always. So yeah, it's um, it's fun, and uh, my goal right now is to uh, possibly get certified through either 3M or Avery. Okay. Uh, within the next couple months. For the film or vinyl? For, for vinyl. Vinyl. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want my second certification. So nice. That's what I'm working towards now. So what do you got to do to get to get a certification like as that? As far as I know, you got to do the class. Now, I, I haven't really researched it, um, but I, I heard it was like a three-day deal. Yeah. Um, you know, learn about it. They want to watch you do it and this and that. 
that's all I kind of really know. I haven't really been searching, searching. I just yeah. know I'm working that direction. So yeah, man. Uh, but this summer's been so slammed that I haven't really had a chance to to do much. I've heard so. from some locals that this summer was pretty hot for you guys. Or is this is this kind of so? I can't really answer that. Yeah. Because I'm I'm still used to Oklahoma heat, uh, even though okay. I've been here for seven years. Yeah. Um, people here, um, it hits ninety and they they complain. But there's no humidity. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's a slight, a little bit, but not like what I'm used to. Yeah. And I mean, they're just complaining, and I'm like, I, I just don't feel the heat. <laughs> so. Um, the winter was was real mild. Um, I think this summer was maybe a little bit hotter than last year, but yeah. I don't think it was. It's been that bad. No. Yeah, because we uh, we were over by Georgetown, and I think they mm-hmm. had they had a fire ban. I think it had been dried up or something. But oh yeah, there, every summer here, there's there's a fire ban. Every yeah, summer. and, and uh, some of the local people were saying that like, yeah, it's been so hot outside, and I was like, you know, used to Houston weather. Really? Did you feel it? You, but you didn't feel it. No, here, right? No, because you, totally you don't. You don't sweat up here. Um, it, it over in like in Houston. It's, I, I'm not too familiar with Oklahoma, but if the humidity oh, is it's high, it's hot. It's, it's the same. Yeah, absolutely. So over in Houston, it's you just like you just have to get used to, to always kind of always like always being sweaty unless you're in absolutely. like air controlled yes. air conditioned place. Yeah. Most of the time, you just you just I'm kind of sweaty, you know. Yeah. And and up here it's it's not like that it's it's different. Um, no, that's but, that was the main deal for me moving here. Is I just I got tired of being in that, yeah. that environment. I just I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm really glad that there's there's a tent market up here because um, like I would I mean and it's back home since it's so hot for us it's it's kind of more of a you know it's kind of more apparent why we need film. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. uh, but uh. Yeah, it's pretty cool that over here they have that too. Because uh, you guys get snow. I'm sure you guys get snow some parts of the year. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it doesn't stay around that long, but we do get snow. Really? Yeah. So it stays around more in the higher higher yeah, parts of the mountains. Yeah, it's more higher um, out towards the north and uh, west in the mountains and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, does it, so how does that? How does it, when it gets colder? How does it affect the the vinyl stuff? Oh, like, very brittle. So do, do you have to be more careful with it? Oh, absolutely. Really? Yeah. Um, the room, uh, the room that we do our, uh, the bay that we do our vinyl in, we try to keep it really, really warm in there if we're doing vinyl. Cause that's okay. like, it's very brittle when it's cold. I was messing one time and I don't know how it happened to me, but I, it, it wasn't during a hot time. I was trying to do a, a vinyl on the Camry at, up at the top okay. and I, I laid it down just to get all the corners down. And when I went to pick it back up so I can stretch it, I guess something I caught with like a tree sap or I don't know what it was, but it caught and it tore it. I'm just like, what? What film was it? It is a 3M uh, black metallic film. Was it the the 1080? 10, yeah. Really? Yeah, I which must have grabbed it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking because I mean that 3M is the from the times that I've worked in they're pretty good vinyl. Mm-hmm. But this time for some reason I don't I don't know what it was and that's and it's like one of those things that uh, I thought well I didn't clay bar the top I didn't because I mean at, at, at that you time you asked me about that didn't you yeah I think so I think you asked like uh, the the prep on uh yeah on the, I might have I think I mean I you're think like I, you're like the guy well, called for everything <laughs> I think I, 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 I there's guys out there that are way better than me trust me yeah. um but I think I think I remember you calling and uh asking me about the the clay bar if yeah we, if we clay bar so yeah you definitely want to get anything off there's mm-hmm. You know what it's like when you rub your hand across the surface of paint. You know you can feel. Yeah, it. or like film oh, too. too. Oh yeah. It's so uh, that it. Yeah, I guess like the same thing as having a clean glass so that the yeah. film Absolutely. grabs on good. I guess it's the same yeah. concept on the. Yeah, I remember you calling me that day and asking me that. That's funny. Yeah, and that was actually. Uh, um, there was one of those things where I, like I had only bought enough just for the top of that, and it's just it tore. I'm like, oh dang. Yeah. Wasn't expecting that, but I mean, it's lesson well learned. It's like what not Absolutely. to do. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah, that, that took care of that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, actually, this past time, we've been having some issues with certain cars. Not very much, but some of the Chryslers. There was a huge flood back uh, last year in Houston, the Harvey, yes. Harvey Hurricane. Yeah, 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 yeah. So a, a whole bunch of cars got flooded out. A lot of the dealerships uh, just fixed them up and sold them. So you have a lot of moisture and stuff. We had this issue with this one Chrysler where we tinted the windshield and we put the soak shield rope at the bottom. Everything, the way it's supposed to be in the way we do it for every car, but water somehow got into the back and all the dash electronics just started to not work. 
So we started panicking, thinking like, oh, we must have fried something. And, um, you know, my brother took out the battery and everything. And, and uh, the guy wanted to check if the battery was good, which, of course, it was because that wasn't really the issue. But when we put it back in, this is sometime after, you know, it started doing that. Some of the stuff started coming back, like the honking started working again. The windshield wipers worked. So it started drying out on its own. Yeah, that's what started to happen. And uh, eventually, like, you know, I thought we were going to have to really foot the bill on this one. But the next morning... Um, we left the doors open and everything, so everything you drive the next morning came in, pushed the start button, everything worked just fine. So I was like, okay, so why? And I, it got me thinking because we've done, the, you know, we do these types of jobs on so many cars. Why is it that this one became an issue? And then when we were taking the battery, because those ba the batteries are in the back, you lift the carpet, man, there's rust and and uh, just moist, and there's rust all over the the back. So I'm like. This car was flooded. Yeah, it was. And uh, yeah, so it was one of those things where I guess uh, since the car was flooded, there was already some sort of damage done to it where a little bit of moisture just... Just opened it back up. Yeah, but luckily it was one of those things where it's just like, just waited, waited you know, overnight. Yeah. Next morning came in, turned it on, and it's just like, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm sure you've had a ton of stories. I've got I did one, um, and this was before Soap Shield uh, started making his... The ropes, ropes yeah. Yeah. Um, did a uh, uh, Jeep Cherokee? I oh, think yeah, it was a Jeep Cherokee. And everybody complains about those. Really? Um, I noticed that people were saying that uh, if you um, tint the windshield and you get water on the on the, the top of the dash. Yeah. And if you go let it sit outside, you know how moisture, that condensation from the Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, is literally warping the dash. Like really? separating. Yeah. So, um, Jeep but, Cherokees, you saying? Uh huh. And even in the new ones? Yes, this is the new ones. Really? Yeah. Now, I did a Jeep Cherokee um, probably two, three years ago. Um, I took every precaution I could. Yeah. You know, and this was before the ropes, you know, before my knowledge of anything like that being out to shove down in there. Yeah. So I just started shoving paper towels like everybody else did. Really? In the past. Yeah. That was the old way to just, do it. You know, just get something <laughs> down in there. And, yeah. Um, you know, tinted it and finished it all up, cleaned everything up, and went to start the car to pull it out. Yeah. And wipers were going nuts. The horn was going nuts. Oh, all the lights were going crazy. And I'm like, wow, it didn't even start. And I couldn't get it to start. And I, just like you, it's like, oh, man, <laughs> I just bought a car. <laughs> you know? Oh, God. Yeah. And uh, so, luckily, um, we were able to... Um, get it uh it was me and uh, another guy that i work with uh we were able to get it uh in neutral and bypass the that lock uh, yeah and we pushed it outside and we opened all the doors and 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 everything and we just prayed and before you know it an hour and a half later we went out and just pushed the button just like like this and started right up everything is back to normal i was like okay we're never doing that again so i i, I feel your pain yeah, like, sometimes like man, you get those. But so shields out there. Yeah, that's definitely made a. Love it. Yeah, made such a difference because I, I was, you. It was because of you that, that I you knew about the me, product. Yeah, yeah. And then you asked me about it, and I was like, dude, you better get some. Yeah, you're doing and, you better get some. It's funny because now, now, like I mean, you know, being in Houston, that some of the other tenders that I talked to, they've they've been in the game longer than I have, but mm -hmm. they they're not very heavy on the social media, so there's a lot of things that like that you are coming. Yeah, yeah. So there was one guy that he was, uh, he he has he had been doing it for some time, but he he's done windshields, but he doesn't do a whole bunch of them. And I asked him, like, hey, so what do you put to catch the water? He's like, I don't put anything. Mm. And I was just like, oh, dude, you got to try this thing. I bought this rope and I showed it to him, and he's like, I've never seen this before. And I'm like, yeah, it's uh, microfiber, it's threaded and everything, but it holds a whole bunch of water. So, you know, oh, he wow. went out, he wow. went out and he got some. And, and that was the other thing that I was really impressed with the, the amount of water. Yeah. That it holds. Sometimes um, when I, you know we're working on windshields and we, you know, pull it out, just that just, just for fun. Just that quick, yeah. Yeah, it just is, for fun. Crazy. You, just, you fold it in your yeah. hand, you twist it, and all the all that water just it's crazy. And like you would, yeah. Thing holds. Just yeah. to think that that water normally would be sitting back there. You know, Robert um, was was so shield. He uh, he actually messaged me on Instagram yeah. when he started doing those ropes. And he's like, "Hey, have you, have you seen these?" And I'm like, "No." And I was, I was, I was attached like that. Yeah. I'm like, I want one. It just looked cool. Give me, you know, yeah. I love new new yeah. stuff. And uh, so I purchased one. And he he sent me a couple and and tried them out. And I'm like, dude, this is 
genius. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of mad I didn't come up with it. <laughs> 20 years, you think I'd come up with something to, 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 cast to something. sell and yeah. know, kind of stop doing it. Yeah. But um, I love it. And uh, I was able to get uh, quite a few and I was able to hand them out to, to all the guys that I work with. And, and they're all just like, man, this is awesome. And so now we won't do a windshield without it. Yeah. I, absolutely. No, same I, I just... I'm not going to take that risk. It works better than crossing your fingers. It, it does. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So Robert's done uh, an, an amazing thing with, uh, with those social. Roles. Yeah. We, we've been, we messaged back and forth because uh, we bought one from one of the stores or one of the distributors back in Houston mm -hmm. thinking it was a soak shield. And uh, we put it up on a post, and we tagged the Soak Shield page. And but he he came out and said, "Hey, that's not our product. It's a imitation or whatever." Mm -hmm. So he sent us a, a few of his samples as well. But it's it's definitely a big 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 uh, difference maker because like one of the things I mean I think this is with everybody. One of the things you're first always skeptical about is when you got to pull it back out. That is going to bring the film. And you asked I, me about yeah. that before you even tried one. Yeah, and I've, I've never had an issue. Like, hey, uh, when you use that, uh, when you're pulling it out, are you, are you lifting the film? And you're you're not lifting it, are you? Nope. No, I issue. haven't had an issue with that. Never. No. Never. Yeah, I mean, and even even there's some winches that are so close to that dash. Mm -hmm. We use this thing called the the reach. We call it a sword. We t all, most of our tools, we change the names and we have our own names for them. So every time it makes it kind of. I saw one of the videos I saw. Is it the yellow? Is it the yellow one? No, it's it's a it's an orange one. It's called the Reach, I think. Uh, but it's it's an orange. It looks like a like just a, a long diamond. Um, and what you know, that's one of the tools that that when you get those winches that are just super cramped to that dash, you just start, you know, wedging it in there. Now, I know, I know, we're not promoting for social right no. now. No, 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 no. Uh, no nobody's you, getting paid here for to promote no anything. No one's getting paid. But Robert, thanks for the product. Um, yeah. Uh, do you only have his one size? I I think I have the smaller one, but we're getting, Are you getting the three other ones in the mail. So. Okay. All right. Because that the really small one works yeah. great for those those kind of windshields. Yeah. Because uh, I've had to use the the real skinny one to, to get in there. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, if you got them coming, good deal. So. Yeah, and, and uh, <laughs> that tool, and like going back to the the, you know, being scared of pulling the film. Like you said, those windows where they're so tight, we yeah. wedge them in there, and even then, at the end of the, at the end of the install, just come back. Yep. Start taking it off, and yeah. it for some reason it never grabs a film. Which, I, I've never had any any problems with those things. Ever, yeah, ever. It, ever. it worked really, really good. So, so. <laughs> they were great. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the ones he's sending in the mail because yeah. I know, like, uh, I think the bigger ones are. Can you can do them for commercial and residential and stuff? I've actually got the the really really thick ones. Really. So if you're getting a three pack. Man, this sounds such like a promotion for him. <laughs> if you're getting the three pack, yeah. uh, you're not getting the the residential one. Okay. Uh, the residential one is, I mean, I kid you not, it's probably like that thing. But dude, honestly, I might as well just get it because, like, I mean, if I was. So here's the thing. So I use it uh, since I do so much flight glass. Uh, I've actually got um, the thirty six. Uh, I think it's the thirty six and the sixty. I think yeah. is what I got. Um, so what I use it for is. Uh, if I'm doing like a, an office building and um, say their desk is really close up to the window yeah. and you look down and it's all those wires from their computer oh, yeah. printer and stuff like that, yeah. you don't want to undo all that um, mm -hmm. because you don't want to have to have them shut down yeah. their production just to tint you know, one or two windows that's by them. Yeah. So I take that and I put it right along that windowsill so when I'm doing that one window, it catches there and it never goes down. So that's the that's the whole reason why I got it. Is certain times, yeah, it works great. So what's what's like you? Let's say you go do some uh, a flat glass project. What's the setup that you always have with you? Like mats, <laughs> portable trash can. <laughs> I mean, what like what's your setup? Uh, well, I I actually I just bought myself a uh, tin keg. So I'm not promoting for him either. <laughs> uh, so I've actually got my own tin cake uh, with the 25 foot hose, which yeah. is phenomenal. I, I love that thing. Uh, I've been doing a lot of um, 25 feet and up uh, windows. Uh, Off like second yeah, floor like, stuff. Like up, yes. Dang. Um, so that 25 foot hose 
Oh, so floors. you keep the tank down I at the bottom? I keep the tank on the floor, and I just bring the hose up with me. And do you climb the ladder, or do you do oh, yeah, a... ladder. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, when you ask for setup, um, I've actually got uh, the, uh, the, the stackable toolbox um, from Home Depot. Yeah. Um, each one has all these different things. Like, oh, is it the one that you roll around? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. And there's there's three tiers, and you can, yeah. you can unlock and switch them around. So every one of them has so many different things in them. Yeah. Uh, the ropes and uh, tons of different maxes. Like, I've got the 8-inch the one from Fusion, yeah. you know, which is great on big windows. you got less strokes. And, uh, yeah, um, yeah, definitely. So when you ask for setup, uh, so on me, uh, I've got... <laughs> so it's, this this is bad. Um, uh, I've got the uh, dirty pouch, the mini uh, dirty, dirty pouch. pouch. Mm-hmm. What's that one? Really? Dirty pouch. Yeah, the dirty pouch. Mike Sanchez. Man, I see. Like this, we're not it, getting paid for this. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, see, this is why I wanted dirty to talk San- to you because uh, you know uh, so much. Uh, uh, the dirty pouch, Mike yeah. Sanchez. Uh, is Mike Sanchez? Yeah, Mike Sanchez is the one with the dirty pouch. Um, I I uh, I found it. I came across his pouches on, on Instagram, and I jumped on one uh, for automotive, okay. and I love it. Well, then he came out with the, the mini pouch, and I thought, you know what? I kind of want to try that for my flat yeah. glass. Uh, I always have stuff on my side when I do flat glass. Yeah. It seems a little easier instead of having everything everything at the front. Yeah, because you're holding film up like this, and it's just easier to reach yeah. down to the side. Um, so I've got I've got my my max. Um, I've got a five way for my cuts. Yeah. I got four knives, uh, spare blades, uh, triumph scraper. Um, and then I, <laughs> I actually made my own paper towel holder. Really? <laughs> yeah. 20 years. This is funny. 20 years. And I've always been picking up towels off the ground. You know what I mean? You <laughs> set the roll on the ground. Yeah. You know, rip off what you need. Yeah. And, uh, 20 years of doing that. And I'm like, you know, there's gotta be a better and I know there's there's guys out there that are making stuff for tool belts for paper towels. Yeah. On, on Amazon. And I bought a plastic, you know, under counter mount for paper towels, really? drilled a hole in the center of it, yeah. put a keychain loop in there <laughs> with a carabiner, and I just strap it on my nice. my belt for my yeah. pouch and my towels are there all the time. That is my setup. That's it. That's that's it. It you gets the job you done. You don't need much for flag life. Yeah, I, I see. Uh, there's this one guy named Jeremy Shapiro. He's in Florida. Um, he's from High Impact Glass Solutions. He uh, he was one of the guys that, that when I first started picking up flat glass tent, I really didn't know much about it. I would I approached it like automotive, which was like the worst way. Right. But uh, when I was learning from this guy, I saw like he had his, he he uses a ton of paper towels, but he's he had a paper towel holder. He's actually got his own product line. I can't remember the name of it right now. Um, I know who you're talking about, but yes. Uh, yeah, he uh, he's got it. He, he's the, he was the first one that I saw that had that like a paper towel holder here, and he's just ripping them up and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, man, one of the other things that I saw from him as well was he had these hampers that you can they fold out and then you fold back in, and then you just you know latch them on the sides. And uh, he uses that for as portable trash, which is actually one of the things that I, I use in the shop as well. Um, but they're like they're, they're closed hampers that you can they fold. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's say like it's just sitting like a little barrel. You fold them all together, and then it's got these little hooks, and then you just hook them onto this little latch, and then you just carry it. It's for space. It, oh man, it makes a big difference. You're gonna have to send me a picture of those when you're. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I de- definitely do that. Uh, just like in flat glass, you man, if you don't have something there to put trash, you you make trash so easy. Just because some of those windows are oh, absolutely are yeah. so big, so you get that huge liner. The just, liner, and then the excess that you're cutting off. And, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that that was one of the things that uh that uh that I saw from him. But the paper towel holders, that's pretty cool. I'm with, hey, ten dollars on Amazon, you can't go wrong. You can't beat that. No. No. But, and it gets the job done. <laughs> yeah, I, man, I'm so curious about seeing like just just like you said, like working with somebody because we can talk, but then it's when, when you're out there. When you visually see it, it's when it's you visually totally see it, yeah, yeah, it's a definitely a lot different. Yeah. I'm very interested in seeing that. Well, five glass, uh, you know. Back then, um, uh, it was it was fairly new, and a lot of people didn't know you can tint a house or a commercial building, at yeah. least in Oklahoma, where I'm from. I think that's kind of generally true about everywhere, huh? I'd say I'd say probably over the last fifteen or so years, it's been fairly. 
I was still yeah. barely new. I mean, at least that part of yeah. where I was, you know, that that region. I mean, you know, I'm sure California, you know, they're always yeah. first on everything, you know. But <laughs> yeah. um, now uh, going from there uh, to here and as much light glass as I do here, um, I mean, it's it's nothing for me to do five, 550 square feet. Easy. Dang, you do I this mean, in a day? I can do that in a day. Wow. Yeah. As long as I'm not up and down the ladders all day. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're just walk up windows and they're yeah. simple. Yeah. Yeah. How do, you, how, how do you ever mess with a uh, really, like, do you ever have to get on the ladder and do five foot wide windows? Oh, I've done ridiculously sized windows. I've, really? I've, I've done so many big windows here. Yeah. That I've never seen a piece of glass that big before. Like, so what's what's it's like so much different here? Did you you ever had to splice them? I've never had to do a two piece. Not here, no. Yeah, and we've had I had one time, but I mean, seventy two inch rolls are out, but they're not. There's windows bigger than seventy two. Yeah, that's and that's there when, is. Yeah, um, but no, I've I've done. Uh, I think the 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 biggest window I've done by myself, uh, reverse roll was uh 72 on the dot up and down yeah by 130 inch feet or inches uh inches inches that's, that's... totally out and yeah. by yourself i was west facing sun was beating down on me oh man and it was it was a nightmare but i got it done <laughs> it wasn't fun what kind of phone like, did you put you, on you there you can't just roll it and drop it you know nah. not like that so i was literally just just hand rolling it out like this, just walking Dang. along the window, and I had to do two of those. But what kind of film did you put on there? Uh, it was Lumar R seven. Lumar R seven. Mm -hmm. That's like reflective one way and and black on the other. Nice. Yeah. Okay. It's with the was that one way mirror? Yeah, something yeah. Like that thing. I, we were at Best Buy like uh, a couple of days ago, and as soon I mean, because I don't know, I'm pretty sure this is with you too. You can always tell a window tinted from a mile away. Oh yeah. Yeah, I pulled up to oh, Best yeah. Buy, and then I was like, and I was you know telling her, I was like. Those windows are tinted. And then uh, as we were walking in, here I am just like looking at it. Because the first thing I look at when a window looks tinted, I'm like, okay, no tint is perfect. So I'm going to look for an imperfection. That's how I know. Oh, absolutely. And so we, I was just staring I at the window. Yeah. Everybody does that. If you're a tinter, you're always eyeballing stuff. You are. <laughs> yeah. You do when you drive down the road, don't you? Yeah. Cars, you're like, oof. Man, I hope I didn't do that. <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah. yeah. I, I know exactly where you're going. Yeah. Man, I, yeah. So we pulled up to that Best Buy and it, it was looked like that film where it's black on the inside and reflective on the outside. Yeah. And I was looking at it. I was just like, some of those windows were really, really high up there. And just like, oh, okay. yeah. somebody went up there and I knocked did, them out. Uh, um, three windows this afternoon that were 25 feet up. 20. You're not scared of heights, huh? I am. Really? I, I hate ladders. Yeah, I do. I hate them with passion. So you get used to them, or you just man, I, you just have to go through. So, it? so, so the deal is, is that uh, so I'm the I'm the main flat glass guy for for this company here in town. Yeah. Um, so anything that's uh, up high like that, um, most of the time they're big windows. I mean, how often do you see little windows yeah. like this that high? They would, you know? yeah. Uh, so usually uh, one of the other guys goes with me. Um, he's actually from Texas. Oh, nice. And uh, he moved up here and he started working with us. Um, so we usually tag team. Yeah. Uh, so the one we did today, uh, it was, I think it was 84 long by, I think it was 50. Um, but it was right over a mantle and there. Like it was just, it was really kind of hard to get. Yeah. Two ladders set up for side by side. And if you try to do it one one person on one ladder, you weren't able to reach one side. Oh, I see. You see what I'm saying? Like yeah. it was it really hard for two people or for one person. Hard to get two ladders in. Yeah. So we just put one ladder like this. He was at the top on one side, I was at the top of the other side. And the whole ladder was just doing this. <laughs> so I hate ladders. Uh so if anything like that, he usually goes with me. Yeah. Um and we just kind of tag team and you know, yeah. Uh, he did some uh, up in Denver uh, a couple months ago. We went to this uh, to this. Uh, gosh, it was a like a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar condo, like wow. like ridiculous. Yeah, uh, all modern and all this. Well, you walk in and it's literally straight up three and a half floors. The windows up there, straight up. No 
flooring, no nothing. It was just a complete open as soon as you open the door. Yeah. All the way out. Wow. So how are we going to do this? Do you guys do them through the outside? No. Can't get a genie lift in there. Yeah. Hmm. So we had to go get a 45-foot extension ladder. Yeah. <laughs> That's Can insane, man. That? Uh, so, I mean, the ladder was literally like, like yeah, almost vertical. Did you have to go do it up there? So, no, he went up. He's the smallest. He's the lightest. Okay. So he went up. Yeah. Uh, uh, the owner of the company was down at the bottom holding the ladder so it wouldn't slide out. And then I was all the way up at the top. Yeah. Leaning over to hand them the water, oh. the tools. The so you were on the third things. floor? Yeah. So I was like leaning over to hand it to oh. him. And then I had my hand out like this just in case just he in fell case he back. Started. He would hit my, my Holy arm. Holy. So, yeah, we've done some crazy stuff. Did you crazy. did you get any footage of that? No. No, no one had a chance to get a camera out. <laughs> that would be, a, that'd be insane, dude. Yeah, it was nuts. Yeah. Have, you, have you ever done like film on a... Uh, a building like where you have to be on the outside no no i've no. seen i've seen some people like that's crazy i, I mean I, I could never fathom me, me having to get up there and do that but I, I, no no i see the window washers and that that plank dude, yeah you know, just, I, I, no you couldn't pay me enough to do that no yeah way. i'd be curled up in the little corner crying <laughs> <laughs> like no Man, and the kids, like, for one, you're outdoors, so you're having to fight the elements. Oh, absolutely. And then on top of that, you just look on either side. And, and you're, yeah, you got nothing. Yeah, There's that's. nothing. Yeah, I, I can't do it. I just can't. I hate ladders. Man, there was this one time uh, we, I went to go do this uh, liquor store, and uh, it, they, it, they had, it had big windows, like 11-foot tall windows, 60, 58 inches wide or whatever. Type yeah, of thing, yeah, yeah. And, but the, the thing about where they had their setup, they had a shelf maybe like less than a foot away from one of the, the windows. It was taking up like half the space of the width. Oh. And on top of that, they had all these bottles on there. And the first thing I thought, okay, we're going to have to be careful with you know, Absolutely. and uh, you know, I, sometimes for someone when I want to be mobile, I, I still don't have the the keg thing. I have the uh, the the pump sprayer that did, <laughs> yeah. you know. So I had Get a keg. Yeah, do, I know. I, I, it, well, actually, here's why I needed because when I, I I hung it on my side and I got this ladder to try to reach over. So you know, this this thing is pointing out this way everywhere yeah. you turn. So as I'm doing something here, um, I turn this way and boom, there goes one bottle. But it was plastic, so. You know, I got lucky with that one, but uh, yeah, this I haven't, I haven't, I don't have any crazy stories about like, you know, big glass jobs or whatever. But oh, I've I've done everything from fish tanks to skyscrapers. What do you put on yeah. fish tanks? Oh, this this uh, guy who owned um, this little barbecue uh, chain in Oklahoma uh, called me up and he okay. said, "I got an odd request." I said, "Okay, what can I do for you?" And he goes, "I need my fish tank tinted," and I. When you hear fish tank, what do you think? You know, a little fish tank. You know, yeah. nothing crazy. Yeah, that's right. over there, and it's huge. It's huge. He wanted the whole back uh, tinted as dark as possible so you couldn't see the filtration system. Because uh, okay. the way the, the tank was set up, yeah, you were able to see through, but if it was tinted on the back side, you weren't able to see around. And oh, okay. It was just this weird, and yeah. I did it. <laughs> I did it. I can actually say I tinted the fish tank. So, well, like, what did... It was so. There's two. There's a fish tank, and then there's glass and infiltration. Yeah, on the on the back side of it. Okay, so, so it was just to cover all that up, so you wouldn't see the huh. the filtration system. That's pretty cool. That's something that not a lot of people can say. Yep. You got that on your. I got. You got that, that on your resume. resume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've got. Uh, gosh, man, I tell you, I've done so much over 20 years. Man, so what's your resume got to look like? I honestly don't know. Uh, because I haven't updated it in, in seven years. Yeah, you, should, you had, <laughs> I should probably do it just just to, just to what you of, would come up. Yeah, um, are you familiar with Supermax? No. Nah. Uh, the uh, penitentiary down uh, it's down in Canyon City from here. It's where like the worst of the worst go. Really? I mean, it's yeah. Uh, okay. So like Timothy McVeigh, uh, the Oklahoma know. City bombing. Okay. That. I think I remember downtown some the mural building, and he had the um, U-Haul truck or rider truck or whatever, and all the kids died. The bombing. No, so Timothy McVeigh. I'm gonna have to look into that. I'll look into it. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I had to go down to Supermax and tint the the pots or the 
officers sit. Yeah. And he walks down the hallways and, and oh, okay. Like that. So that that little pod that's in the middle of everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they were having some issues with inmates coming, you know, some of the FEMA officers and stuff like yeah. that. And so we did uh, that near our seven film. Okay. Um, so it was me and another guy went down there, uh, five checkpoints to go down. Dang. They counted every single snap on your old foot. Really? Yeah. If you didn't go back out with the same amount, they were doing a shutdown until they found it. So how would you? Did you have when you broke them oh, all? Oh, dude, to put... you talk about snap! And I mean, I was, I was like, what, what do I do? <laughs> you know, what do you do with a little piece yeah, of plate? You know, you're used, used to, to just, just going. Like yeah. That. And I mean, we uh, we brought uh, a cup with the lid. And yeah. We just made sure it was in there, and yeah, so it was crazy. Um, but when I when we were down there doing these pods. Uh, I mean, there was inmates just right across from me, you know, and they were just staring and looking and weird. I yeah. Mean, you talk about the creepiest feeling. Right. Um, and then one of the officers said, yeah, Timothy McVeigh's in, in uh, down one of these halls. And I'm like, oh, that kind of hit home. Yeah. You know, because I remember the bombing in, in Oklahoma and um, knowing that I was right there, literally, you know, probably, you know, few yards from Dang. him was a little well close to home yeah um but i never saw him but what was funny is one of the inmates was right across from one of the windows i was standing and so that r7 was staying up there and there were really long windows okay. and so i was standing on a little step ladder and, and i held the film out to, to drop the drop ladder. him yeah. <laughs> he, he was like do one of these things <laughs> like watching me and i just go and dropped it and he was like oh where'd he go it was all the officers dude they were all laughing and stuff and they're like they really can't see in and i'm like no and they were just they were happy they were happy with it yeah so i mean i've i've done quite a bit uh over 20 years yeah i've been million dollar homes uh gosh you name it i've I've probably done it man i'm sure you've gotten the request sometimes where they say like they'll go up to you and say hey i want a really really dark tent but i want to be able to see out at night (laughs) it's well, you got to pick one or the other. I know. And that's the same thing as, hey, I want as dark as possible, but legal. It's like, really? Yeah. I, mean, I don't want people to see in, but I want to keep it legal. Right. Like, it's, yeah. <laughs> same thing with with, uh, with houses. And, you know, I really wish someone would come up with the, with the film, because er- everybody that does Five Fast, they're, they're always wanting um, a film like this. And I'm not aware of it. Uh, so if, if someone's watching this or listening to this, Hit me up and let me know where I can find this film. Yeah. But when you do um, uh, a house, you know, a lot of people are like, so during the day, you can't see it. Yeah. But at night, it's the reverse effect. Yeah. And there's no way around it. So what do you do? And I can't, I cannot find that film. And, I, 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 you know, I follow guys on Window Film Revolution and yeah. people are always asking for it. And everybody's like, there's nothing out there. Yeah. So if I'm missing it. I want to know. Hey, so you were talking about that film uh, that you said you wanted, if a company exists that makes it, to let yeah, you know. What yeah. film is that? I don't know. I was going to say, if it's like, out there, I want to know about it. I don't know anything about that film. But like, you, you look, what kind of spe- specific film were you, or not specific, something what, where, what's... Something where like during the day, oh, know, everybody there's... gets their privacy, but then at night, yeah, it, it kind of flips where... Whoever's interior can see out. Man, I saw this. Uh, not in. So it, it's yeah. one of those things, but it, I don't know if anything out there. Yeah, because I think, uh, I mean, you can attest, you can tell me if I'm wrong on this, but I think like one of the competitors to Tint, I don't know if it's even a competitor, but like Shades and stuff, because Shades have a convenience of them where you can close them and open them, and, right. and Tint is, right. it, when you want Tint for privacy, that's when it's, it's kind of a... Yeah, at night I can't see out. Yeah, right. unless you turn your lights off and then right. And if you have a light on the outside, outside then, yeah, right. You just have to do that reverse effect. Yeah, because I mean, over at my place, I've got silver twenty on the, on all the windows. And at night with the lights on, are you just oh, seeing it's just right straight back mirror? At you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, I, once it starts to get dark, all the blinds go down. As yeah. soon as I I turn off my lights, sometimes I put them back up because then I could see out again. You can still see out. A and bit. then I have that privacy right. outside. Yeah, because then there, there's no light on the inside. When I, you know, at night in the outside, there's some light, right. so that helps to reflect that off. But I've heard this tent, man, it's a photochromic or something like that, photochromic film, but it doesn't get very dark. I don't know if that's for fight glass. I know it's for Autom- automotive. Yeah, and I, I don't even know the 
I don't even know if it would last a long time either. Because I think it's, I think it's such a new product that, you know, like the, it, I've seen it. It's super expensive too. It's like I just want to do my windshield in it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, I was gonna <laughs> order it, man. I can't remember what the 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 pricing, just the cost. I can't remember what it was, but it was it was pretty expensive. But I was wanting to get it because. For the same reason, I'm like, hey, this is pretty cool if this actually works. Is I think they had two of them. One of them goes from 70 at, at its lightest. Yeah. And 45 at its darkest. 45, I think. yeah. I think it's, yeah, 40 or 45. Something like that. Yeah. And uh, I think the other one was, the lowest was 20, 25. Like, it, there was a second one that's, I think, maybe starts off at 45, goes down to 20 or something like that. I don't remember. Yeah, but, I can't remember the, the actual numbers. But, but yeah, uh, I, I, see, I wanted to buy just enough to do my windshield. Yeah. Because during the day, yeah. Yeah. It's dark and then at night it just kind of goes back and then yeah. You know, it's kind of like glasses, man. Like they I think if they could do them for glasses, I'm sure somewhere down the line somebody can figure it out for tent. That'd be pretty cool. That's Yeah, I can't remember what's uh I can't remember her name. That's that was pushing that photogramma film. Um gosh, sorry yeah. why. Uh I I I had a guy from China contact me about uh, it. This this lady's on gosh, Instagram and when the film revolution and I think Tint Depot started to carry that film. It's from her. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Is Tint Depot, but I can't remember her name. Yanni, Yanni, or uh, I actually I can't that sounds Anyways, kind of familiar. Yeah, I can't remember because I saw her video and I was like, ooh. So I got a sample. Yeah. Uh, of the two, and played around it for a little bit, and I'm like, hmm, that price. Well, you, you got a sample of the actual film? Oh, yeah. So did you put it up in the sun and everything? Oh, absolutely. Then it works? It, it works. Really? It works. But I would love to get a just a big enough piece of my windshield. <laughs> get a sample <laughs> just, just for that. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, that's, that's, that's a good um, uh, sell point for yeah. eBay. If you put it on your own, be like, yeah. man, look, check this out. Look at this. Dude, that's you actually – because it – you know, like back where where we're from, uh, over in Houston, not a lot of people know. Like the general people, the general public, don't know about ceramic tin. No, no. They don't know. Like you know, they, you know, the general consensus is they, you know, oh, the darker the tin, the more heat it'll block out. And, Absolutely. And so right. once you tell them, like, hey, there's actually this clear tint that can block out more heat than the limo of this whatever. Absolutely. Right. You show it to them, and uh, they're like, "Wow, I didn't even know that existed." Right. So um, I, that's and then that's when you show them with a the meter. Yeah, it, it's it's a it's a sealed deal right there. Yeah, I mean, you can't you can't you can't budge that. No, no, <laughs> you know, and it's the the one with the hand actually, because um, they can speak any language they can speak, but if you you feel heat, everybody feels it, no Absolutely. matter what. Yeah, right. So I put the the, the heat lamp, in, and then I have to you know I have a like a five percent regular tin, and I have mm -hmm. the clear ceramic. Oh and yeah, I, they feel the difference in the heat, and it's one of those things I didn't yeah. know they, that was out there. So yeah, like the the that type of tin, the one that changes color, not changes colors, but changes shades. Right. It reacts to the light. That's like I'm, that's even further than the ceramic tin. That's yeah. like one of those. I, I I'm I'm gonna get I want to get. A... A big roll of it. <laughs> I do. <laughs> That'd be sweet. It so performance wise, does it block heat or is it just for you the? No, I I got the samples and and um I was so busy with with just regular work and everything yeah. else and you know I'm a I'm a father and so certain things I come across and it's like oh this is cool you play with it for a little bit and you're like all right I'll look at it later and you uh, do this and yeah. then you just you know yeah. it's like squirrel and i'm off on something else um i have not read the specs on it yet yeah uh, i just wanted to kind of see it in person yeah and just kind of get a feel of it man so, i think i might now after this talk i think i'm gonna go back and i'm gonna order one hey, i'll go in half on a roll with you all right <laughs> it's one of those hey, like, it's it's yeah yeah it's, i mean it is expensive yeah it's it it's, it's but uh all Man, is a 36 worst case years. scenario, we just lose the investment. But <laughs> hey, what if, what if it's worth it growing to something? Right. You know, you throw it on all your friends' cars. Yeah, cares, right. Yeah, <laughs> they'll do it. Yeah, <laughs> your friends will be like, "You want me to do it? I'll do it." <laughs> and they'll, they'll be the they'll be the guinea pig. Yeah, they don't care. Yeah, and because I, I, I was so curious just about testing the well for first how long it's gonna last. Yeah, and that's and, what a lot of people. I heard a lot of people asking that, like, "What's the what's the long? How long yeah. is it gonna last?" You know, is it one you're of those that five much. year films, three yeah. year films? Is this yeah. going to fade and turn purple? And all? I mean, you know, who wants to put something like that? Yeah, that expensive. Yeah, on a windshield. Now, granted, a lot of people don't keep their windshields for five years, especially up here. 
Uh, right, there's a lot of rock chips. Oh, oh, because you guys get the ice on the road. Yeah, the stuff they put out during the winter, and you know, they, you know it's not that like they sweep the roads all the time. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, would it benefit me here? Who cares if it only lasts three years? No one really keeps a windshield for three years. Yeah. So it's one of those things where it could probably benefit here. Yeah. If a tenor wanted to bring that in. Yeah. But I don't know about you guys. I'm sure you guys don't do windshields. Uh, I mean, windshield replacements no. a lot. So, yeah, unless, that's a factor too. You got to yeah. think about that. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the things that I was wondering about too. Just and I just thought, okay, if the performance wise, if this doesn't do much for heat, I'll just sandwich it with the ceramic film, and then we'll see how that goes. Right. Um, yeah. Just to darken up the windshield a little bit, but like it's just, yeah. I just think it'd be like the coolest thing just to have. Why not? Yeah, because I mean, at the end of, at at night, I, I have a fifty percent on my windshield. That's how I've, I've been I've been driving around. Uh, in in the city, it's not that much of an issue because there's street lights. Right. But some of the darker roads, like, like mountain roads back yeah, here, yeah, like here, yeah, yeah, so I have to be driving with the the high beams on, and yeah. and uh, sometimes I got to roll my window down. Just but see, to I can't, with... I can't do fifty because my headlights are tinted. Oh yeah, so, so... <laughs> I'm 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 bad enough as it is with seventy. Yeah, with my with uh, my headlights tinted, but it was the tonight. chameleon tint that that you have on there. Mm -hmm. Is it better than ceramic tin for keeping the heat out? You know what? Uh, I did a, uh, with my meter, I did the um, uh, ceramic 70 uh, versus the chameleon 70. Yeah. And they were metering just about the same. Same. I did not see that big of a difference. So, yeah, I assume this one's going to look darker just because it's got that. It's just because you're seeing the color first yeah. instead of looking. Oh, through. okay. So, yeah. Because with the ceramic film, it's. <clears throat> Overcast days, that film. It's nuts. Really, you it's can't nuts. see it. You can't see a thing, and it's only seventy percent. Yeah, that's so, pretty cool. The overcast. Yeah, it's awesome. Man, dude, I, do you ever get uh, dark windshield requests? Like some people ask for like thirty or twenty. Yeah, and we try to steer them out of it. Because it's it's a liability for the shop as well, huh? Uh, it can be, yeah, but we try to steer them out of it. We do. Yeah, because uh, we had one guy. And I, same for me, I, I don't like taking them in just because the risks associated with it at night. In the daytime, of course, you're going to see out. But it, it's at night. Yeah. When you're driving some to some of the darker streets and people wearing darker clothing, mm -hmm. it, it gets so hard to see out. And uh, if an accident does happen, it's like, it's kind who's, of... Who's at fault here? Yeah, it's like, who tended the... the yeah, but... Who, who agreed to it and the guy, you know. So I, it's just, it's it can create a mess. I try to. Man, it can go either way. Yeah, I had one guy. He. Uh, I mean, you can uh, you can actually go. Well, he said he was never going to drive at night, so how's it my fault? Yeah. You know, it's. Yeah, it's just. It, yeah, I had one guy who was a. Uh, I think he was an investigator or a police officer, but he he had his he had a charger. He had black interior, which obviously makes all tint look darker. Absolutely. So he put five percent on the sides and the back, and then he's. Now he's complaining that you could see in the through his front windshield. And I'm like, dude, all you can only see your knuckles on the steering wheel. But he's like, nah, I want I want to be able to just sit somewhere and not have anybody see. And I was like, well, you can do the 50. The 50 is pretty good. It'll still give you some visibility at night, especially if you have you know your lights are good. He's like, no, nah, I want to do the 20. I was like, man, I wouldn't want to do the 20 if I were you. He's like, no, I want to do the 20. I'm just like, you did it. All right, yeah, I I was I wasn't too comfortable doing it, but you know. He seemed like he knew what he was doing. He was since he was like you know somebody. I think he was a police officer. So uh, he's probably the only one, only exception that I would. I, I would. If he was a PI, I have no idea. Maybe that's why. Probably he wanted to make it look like he no one was in there. Yeah, I mean, uh, we had her on our story, and uh, when you drove it out, this thing was just like. Oh. I saw that one. It was a charger, man. Yes, it, I saw that you one. You drove so it out. Like, it's just that shields dark. Black, I remember that. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, that one was just like uh, it was just crazy. <laughs> that was like the the darkest like I've ever done any any vehicle. Well, I mean, I've I've done like people wanted to double up on the sides, but I'm talking about like overall. Overall, yeah, you, yeah, because some windows you get in, you look at them in a certain angle and you could see through them. Yeah, this one you could look at them from every you just couldn't exactly. see anything. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, there's the interior is black, so there's no light bouncing off. There's no light coming in because everything is tinted. Every, so yeah, it just looked looks super super dark. Yeah. Um, yeah, hopefully he's. Every car's gonna look different. <laughs> hopefully he's driving it responsibly. Right? But... Yeah. <laughs> he's not gonna come knocking on your door. <laughs> no, nah, I don't think so. But uh, that's awesome. Yeah, man, some of those, uh, some of those 
jobs that people have asked for is just crazy. Oh yeah, I've I've tons of tons of stuff. Two layers of five. You know, and I'm like, oh, my brother did why? that on his why? on his side window. He didn't do it on the back one because he knew like dude, you were not gonna be able to see out. But even even on the side windows, whenever um I I get in the car in his in his car, I'm just like, dude, why? <laughs> I'm like just, one layer is fine. You're not gonna yeah. see through it. And he's like, ah, just just for whatever. Yeah. But yeah, I mean it's uh been there done that. I've I've had Dark, dark. I've layered my own vehicles and stuff, but so like, what what do you, you know, like put I've on? I've got your, five, five all the way. Well, I've uh, I've got fifteen over factory, and then five. Oh, okay, on the yeah, yeah. So. And that matches them up on the inside, so where they're evened out. Yep. That's pretty yep. cool. Lumar is a uh, your choice of film, huh? Yeah, nice. <laughs> Not selling for Lumar either. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it every is. everybody's got their own. Uh, you know, like everybody's comfortable working with a certain type of film. Absolutely, and there's, um, there's a lot of films out there I've never used before, and everybody says, "Oh, this is the best film." Da da da. Strings like butter. Da da da. You know, everybody's yeah. got their preference. Yeah. Uh, I've been using Lumar here for seven years. Uh, I used Global in Oklahoma since day one. So. And you know, actually, and and uh, I saw a video, man. I think from Patrick over at Window Tinting Business YouTube channel, put out a video called "The Truth About." Uh, window tint and he talked about uh, two manufacturers in the world that have that deep dye process one of them being Garwar out of India yes Eastman Chemical Company I think Eastman? out of yeah. London well or out of I can't remember what it was but it was Eastman Chemical Company was one of them and, well uh, Eastman owns Lumar yeah, yeah yeah and I think uh, Garwar is with Global they okay. uh, they they because uh, one of the their top distributors is in, is in Houston so I I, I, t- I ask him I talk his ask his ear off questions about hey how does this tent made you know like because like i want to know what i'm selling you know it's but absolutely but he's he's telling me like um one of the things that he told me recently and it was i've only heard it from him but i was asking him about a carbon film and he's like well all i sell is carbon i was like well what is that and i was like well it's basically a deep dye and that's what makes it color stable um but like he's the only person that i've heard it from i don't know if you've heard anything like that no never heard that yeah so um he, I've never, I've never had a carbon film in my hands before. Well, so, so Lumar, um, Lumar, well, Eastman Chemical Company is the other manufacturer that have the process to deep dye a film. And basically, from what I understand, they mix the, they put the dye in the granules as the film is being made, and that's what makes it last a lot longer, rather than just kind of like coating it. Okay. And he said that's what gives it the longevity. And Eastman Chemical and Gowari are the only two that can have that that have that process where they can do it. So Lumar, um, I'm sure they're, they're color stable. Some of their, I'm sure their films are color. Yeah, they're color stable. Yeah, yeah. so I, I think that's what's considered carbon. I think. I, I didn't know that. I, I never. I see a lot of guys talk about carbon film, but I yeah. didn't know that was the that was the film. I didn't know that was their process. Oh yeah. Was, for, I, from, yeah, from what he told me, he says it's just a it's a mark mar- carbon is just a marketing a thing. Marketing. The real the real thing is deep dye. And uh now I was asking about ceramic tin, he's like, Yeah, that's kind of also it's an IR film, but they label it ceramic tin because yeah. it helps it sell better, I guess. Um but uh it works. Yeah, so I know like Lumar was one of those those other brands that I know like that that hold their name pretty good. Cause I've oh, seen yeah. like we worked with uh man, we see those stickers all the time coming from dealerships and stuff and uh you can always tell when the film had a good glue when you have to take it off because we've had films where we had to take them off and it just comes out like butter so the adhesive on it wasn't didn't grab on as long as a lot of them are faded but like lumar films always tend to have you always got to pull a little bit of some muscle pulling them out because lumar's uh i love lumar i've never worked with their flat glass tent though you ever do pressure sensitive flat glass Mm -hmm. really man i find it harder to work with why well, because like uh, on a water activated adhesive, you know, you don't have to worry about the film sticking be- prematurely before you're ready to squeeze it with a pressure sensitive. Um, if if I don't, so like the way that I do it is a lot of times if we can fit it on our plotter, we cut it there and, um, you know, you obviously cut off your X's, it leaves an extra liner on it. So and then we lay it on the peel board, peel it halfway, spray it, peel the other half, spray it and roll it. So then when we reverse it, it's kind of like taking a pressure sensitive, make it into water activated adhesive type whatever okay. but unless if i don't do that if i just roll it and then i start unpeeling it um it's sometimes especially if the sun is on the other side and being on the glass man i think the, the film just starts to stick before i'm ready for it to 
hmm. before I'm ready positioning it. Uh, do you do it certain? Do you do it a different way? Uh, or you just keep wetting it as you unroll it? I actually do them. I do them both the same way. Really? Yeah, I reverse roll. Yeah. Uh, just one you can't snap and one you can. You know. Yeah. Um, I I, yeah, I had to learn that the hard way. It's a, I know. <laughs> um, so it, I do it the same way, and you know, I I know there's probably someone out there that's going to hear me say that, and they're like, that's not the way to do it, you know, yeah. or whatever. And you know what? Everybody's got their ways. Yeah. Um, I'm comfortable doing it the same way for both films. Um, I just spray it and I just roll it down a little bit and as I'm I get it to the top stuck I'm spraying and unraveling at the same time uh, and I it's see. just all at once and so I you got one hand any, right gotcha yep. I see that's probably what I wasn't I wasn't doing just I mean I would I, the smaller ones you can roll I, I roll them down with with one hand but some of the some of the wider ones mm-hmm. and I'm doing it with with two just, I I don't know probably just like I'm spraying know. I something it's just a, what you get used to yeah that's probably that's probably my issue there because as the bottom is drying out here I am putting some sticky film on it and <laughs> you know it is what it's like it, the drop row method I remember one guy told me about it and every time I it's funny because. I've had people t- like explain, try to explain it to me just through words, like without having to actually show me, and I never understood it's, it. It's it's hard to <clears throat> it's it's hard to to say it without yeah. seeing it. Yeah, and and uh, they would he would tell me like basically just like this is like yeah you roll up the film and then you peel it and when you unroll it like the film the liners on the other side and I'm like how you know and and uh, so until finally I looked it up and then I saw how somebody did and I was like oh okay I get how it, I get it now so then I saw him do a, a drop roll. And uh, you know, we go to do this this uh, this commercial job, and I've never drop rolled before, and we're working with a pressure sensitive film. So here I am thinking like, oh, watch this, and then and nothing. Stop. Oh man, yeah. And the worst ones I've had is whenever I drop roll them and they slide off, like they don't unroll and they uh, slide off to the side. Off. Yeah, yeah, and I'm just like, oh god, like yeah. here. I, I mean, this big window. No, I, so I need help. That- on the, the the trick of the the pressure sensitive, um, so what I do is I still I still reverse roll, um, I separate about a half an inch or, or an inch, and I start bringing that liner over, and I'm already spraying that, so it's oh, still okay. rolled up like this. Yeah. And then once you get it, the liner flipped over, I can literally sit here and do this, and yeah. it'll start unrolling itself. Nice. So the adhesive is facing you now. Okay. Okay. So the liner's coming back off on the front. Yeah. Yeah. And I will do, uh, depending upon how big the window is, um, I'll try to do half. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm I'm six one and a very long arm reach, so I'll I'll just do half and I'll hold it. Yeah. I'll spray it, kind of same method you're doing on the glass. Yeah. Um, then I'll roll it back up. I'll stick it, get it where I want. Yeah. And then it comes down real easy, just pulling it. And then when you get to the bottom half of your window. You just spray and pull, and yeah. then you're done. So that's pretty cool, man. But you know, everybody figures out when you're by yourself, and you got no one to, oh, to help yeah. you, or you know, you got to come up with something. Yeah. You know, use the window next to you if you can. Yeah. You know, but um, you got to get creative with that. Absolutely. Then. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm in people's homes and offices, and customers are watching and stuff. And they're like. How are you going to do that window? I don't know yet. <laughs> I'm going to figure this out, though. Watch this. Yeah. So, yeah, we have we all run into those issues. Absolutely. Yeah, sometimes we walk into jobs, too, and uh, people are, like, looking at you, like... Because, I mean, you're looking at the window, too, trying to figure out a game plan. Yeah. And, and sometimes they take it as, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. And it's, Absolutely. Because it's like, they're looking at it as, it's a square piece of glass. Yeah. What's so hard? Yeah. The same thing with the car. Yeah. First thing out of their mouth. Oh, it goes on the outside. What? <laughs> you know, that, er, it's the, I, it's the that's same universal thing. then. Yeah, absolutely. It's the same thing. All, all tenors here, we, we've all been down that road. and it's just. It's so I'm just sure fun. you guys have gotten like, hey, it's it's going to rain. It's not going to mess up the tent, oh, right? absolutely. It's like, yeah, no, it's, it's on the inside. It's tons of, oh, yeah. I had, I've had uh, um, sometimes when, when people want to watch you install, and they... they uh, like, you know, when you work in the film, you, you're cutting it on the outside, you're shrinking it and all that stuff. A lot of times I notice when you're shrinking, and that's when they think that you're actually tinning it. 
So whenever you're shrinking like the side windows yeah. and you've got them overlapped and you've got that light gap because yep. you're shrinking, yep. they're like, hey, it's not, it's not, it's on there crooked. And I'm just like, oh, it's, I'm yeah, not I done yet. I hate it when people watch, dude. Yeah. I, I do. It's just, it's a floodgate of questions. Yeah. Why are you doing that? What's in there? What's that for? What's the, and it's like, man, the more I gotta stop and answer a question, yeah, it takes it'll take me double to do the job. Yeah. Um I, I I don't mind it certain people, but you get that vibe from certain people where you know, they just wanna sit back and watch. And you most likely they're not gonna ask a lot of questions, maybe yeah. one or two. Um, but then you get the ones just, just like this and you're like, Oh my gosh, just or the, let me do my job. <laughs> yeah. Or so, like the F man, I don't know how it is over here, but over in Houston, some people are super picky about their cars. Oh like yeah, super picky, oh, and absolutely. so they're just watching your every move as if like you know, this, like you know, as if you as if you just started. And I'm like, dude, yeah. I've done you know, a bunch of cars, man. Yeah. yeah, but I guess it's like it's a thing. I guess it's anywhere. It's anywhere. In, anywhere in the in the game, and everybody's I guess got to deal with it. Yeah, in some form or another, but. Man, tell me about the shirt, dude. How, how did that come about? Like, oh, um, so the shirt. Uh, a buddy of mine uh, in Oklahoma who I actually trained uh, had a gym. Yeah. He's running his own thing now. In, uh, Oklahoma? Back in, back in my hometown, and, and he's doing very well. Um, matter of fact, he's trying to land a, a huge uh, safety security film job. And uh, I may have to go help him. <laughs> he's never done it before, so yeah. he's trying to see what he can do. Um, anyways... Uh, we were goofing around, and um, we kind of came up with the, the definition of, of the, the tenor thing and, and stuff. And so we, we found the actual definition that someone had oh, really? somewhere. And it was, um, I can't even remember how long ago we, we found it. And uh, uh, I said, hey, why don't you make me a couple of stickers? Because at the time he had a little plotter and stuff. So he made some, and, and then he's like, we should make shirts. I'm like, yeah, let's make some shirts. So we just started making shirts and just kind of having fun with it. And yeah. the, the whole tenor definition kind of stuck around. And uh, I think there's a few people that have heard it, but I think the majority of my followers, they're just like, never seen that before in my life. I've never seen it. So it was just kind of funny. It's uh, the definition is kind of, uh, kind of the truth. I mean, so what's the definition for the definition of a tenor is a slightly twisted individual guaranteed to take you to the darker side. That's what the, the actual definition. That's the definition of a tenor. So um, it's it's pretty funny. I mean, you got any more shirts? Is that the only one? Uh, out actually, so I'm out right now, but uh, I've been making them on the fly. So if anybody nice. wanted them, they just can ask for you know uh, so, color. Yeah. And size and stuff and where where can they find you? Uh, through te- uh, uh, through Instagram. At Instagram. Tint Dude three. Yep. At Tint Dude three. At Tint Dude three. That's yeah. all right. I love it. It's just fun. Uh, all the guys that I work with, they all got one and stuff, and we'll wear them at work sometimes. You got any more ideas coming out with some new shirts? Because that thing that's pretty clever. Uh, I would like to do uh, possibly some hats uh, eventually uh, with my Instagram, uh, possibly with the the uh, definition and. And yeah. stuff like that. But I got a couple of things up my up my sleeve. So there you go. I'm working on stuff. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Anybody interested, follow it. There you t- go. Dude three. Absolutely. On Instagram. And I always follow back. So <laughs> I always do. That is true. That is uh, true. And uh you definitely helped us out with some followers and, oh, yeah. uh, I've, in our I've, past when you I've had a lot of followers uh contact me, ask me little tricks uh, tips and and tricks of the trade of, yeah. especially with flat glass. Um that's crazy. A guy in um, uh, gosh, where's he at? Uh, Maryland. Uh, yeah. he, uh, he asked for a couple of questions. Um, Nashville. Um, he's hit me up a couple of times. So <laughs> it's, it's funny. It's, it's, it's yeah. absolutely funny. And they, and they all have my number and they'll all call or they'll text me. Hey man, I got this going on. What do you, what do you think I should do? You know? <laughs> and it's funny cause I mean, I've been doing it for 20 years and I know there's guys out there who've been doing it. 20 plus more than me yeah. and probably faster and better and, and no more stuff than I do. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I think over 20 years I've learned quite a bit. I've been around the block a lot. Yeah. Um, and I, I love helping people out. I just, I do. And, and it's nine out of 10 times they always text back, man, that was the best freaking idea ever. You know, uh, dude, man, it, good it, just, at, it works. Yeah. So I, I love it. And, um, and uh, it's it's a real um, 
awesome community just just online with the, the tenors because you know I ask guys and some of the girls you know hey yeah. well, how are you doing what are you using on your on your solution or you know what tool did you use on that window or whatever yeah because I see stuff that I haven't done before yeah and I just I, I want to learn so yeah constantly learning yeah that's it. the one thing I, about this industry man is there's so many ways to do it I, I always looked at tin as a an art form just because it there's is. there's so much I mean, the the end result that you everybody tries to get to the end result, which is you know try to do the best possible job. Absolutely. But the real journey is getting there. Getting there. Because everybody, I like, and I've yet to find, and I don't think I ever will, two people that tend identically the same. I think there's there's they yeah. might tend similar, but I think in either way, the choice of tools or a certain step or there's always I, some. I, I don't think that's even possible. Because it's so personal, boy. So many it things is. that uh, so many ways to do it, but it is. I know if I worked around you, I'm sure I would either pick up on something and take it with me and yeah. do and it. And likewise, the other Or thing. modify it. Yeah. You know, um, like some of the guys here uh, in town, you know, they see some of the stuff I've done and they've taken and ran with it yeah. and vice versa. So, yeah, it's always changing. Pretty cool. I love it. Well, Jason. Yeah. I Pleasure. appreciate the talk, oh, man. Absolutely. It is uh, first ever, uh, the first ever episode on the Tint Podcast. Uh, Jason at Tint Dude Three yep. on Instagram. Make sure you give us a follow, order a shirt, and yeah. uh, we'll be getting some for us as well. So yeah, I'll get you guys but some. Just pre- tell me how many. I'll get them out to you. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will. But it's a pleasure okay. talking to you, man. Uh, looking forward to sitting down somewhere sometime in the future. And uh, man, we'll if, if it's ever possible, um, if they ever, you know, if it's ever possible, just to go in and just watch. Watch you know what work. we need to do? We just need to plan a, a, a flag glass job down there and just have me drive down there. Oh, really? I'd do it. I'd do really? it RP. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. All right, I'll remember But it better that. be more than like two or three windows. No, no, no. no. I'll, I'll, make, I'll make it worth the drive. I'll make it worth the drive. <laughs> That'd be fun. I'd, I'd love to do it. Yeah, awesome. Absolutely. Dude, awesome. Sweet. Appreciate it very much. Appreciate it, man. You bet. And that concludes the Texas Tidmasters podcast. Thank you for tuning in.